Good evening. Welcome to another episode of What Nobody Told Me After 65. Well, it's your lady on the go, lady in the know, Miss Info. You have reached the Information Nation, where knowledge is shared and wisdom exchanged for the betterment of a people. Well, after my video yesterday, I lost some subscribers. See ya. I'm not mad at you. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. And since this is my channel, my opinion, right? You can watch it, you can like it, or not. This is America. Democracy is alive. Did you see the news today? God is not amused. You will not mock God and get away with it. I don't care who you are. So, today, let's have some fun. Been a little heavy here lately. Today, I'm going to take a look at comedy. Why? Because laughter does a heart good like a medicine. It's good for what ails you. African American or black comedy plays a substantial role in American culture. Now, we've been around for a long time. There were minstrel shows. It's a form of theater. Mostly white actors were wearing blackface during those shows portraying us as buffoons. Then we had vaudeville, which was variety and entertainment that started in France, where they were more liberal. And when it got here, our folks were able to get a good part in, because we could dance, we could sing. We'd already been acting uh, since we landed here, acting like we were happy. And then you had blackface and coon songs. All of that was part of the comedy era uh, in America uh, when comedy first got started, sometime after the American Revolution. Now, Coon songs, I had to look it up. They were stereotypical songs about black people, and they were popular from 1888 to 1920. Coon songs. Maybe I'll do a whole video on that. However, comedy in America runs the gamut. What's funny in America may not be seen as funny in Canada or across the pond in Great Britain. Remember Monty Python? <laughs> I used to like that show, um, but a lot of my peers just didn't get it. American humor is more observational and is very much a staple in American comedy. Most comedians will start off by saying, I noticed, or just the other day, or on my way to the theater, and then proceed to give you their observations of a particular situation. How they spin it is what makes it funny. Early humor or comedy uh, relied heavily on slapstick, and physical comedy. You know, the um, knock down the pie in the face routine, due in part to the silent era. This was before the talkies. The first American comedic figure was the character called the Yankee. This, he was the first widely accepted American character that the nation found funny. He could make fun, we could make fun of, and 
He told jokes and stories, played practical jokes, and just made you laugh. Clearly, before the American Revolution, there was not a lot to laugh about. We were under the British rule. We didn't have anything to laugh about. But after the American Revolution, when the country felt free from the worry of self-preservation, you know, the worry of trying to keep yourself together, alive, whole, uh, the country could laugh at a little bit of stuff, even laugh at itself, mostly through the musings of Mark Twain. He was called the greatest humorist in the U.S. and the father of American literature. He's known for and famous for Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. In the 20th century, some of the strongest influences came from the Jewish community in comedy. There were the Three Stooges, the Marx Brothers, Lenny Bruce, Rodney Dangerfield, Mel Brooks, he was funny, Woody Allen, Lenny David, I'm sorry, Larry David, Seinfeld, and John Stewart. That's just to name a few. Now, there, there were others. <coughs> the latter half <coughs> of the 20th century saw an influx of African-American comedians with a lot of exposure stemming from TV shows such as The Jeffersons, Saturday Night Live, and The Cosby Show. Soon, black comedians became household names. Bill Cosby, everybody knew who he was, and Eddie Murphy. They were two of the most popular. But there were many, many more. And during my research for this report, I uncovered some little known, or rather very little exposure to some black comedians. Who remembers Rochester from the Jack Benny show? <laughs> His real name was Eddie Anderson, and he transitioned from vaudeville to radio and then to films and television. So, there were some other shows that I liked, too. They weren't, I guess, all comedy, but the black people that were on them were pretty funny. Like Benson, remember that? He was on the uh, TV show Soap. He was hilarious. And then there was, and it wasn't a comedy, but there was Diane Carroll in Julia. She got her feelings hurt because they said no black woman can make that kind of money, blah, blah, blah. And then there was a different world. These were just sitcoms or television sitcoms that came to my mind um, when I started looking at these comedians. Um, Robert Guillaume, Guillaume, yeah, he played Benson, but he wasn't considered a comedic actor. Uh, he was pretty serious. He'd done Shakespeare and theater and very well educated. But how about these folks? Mom's Mabley. <laughs> Remember her? She did some dirty records. Because a lot of our comedians, our humor was sort of raunchy. And it wasn't in mainstream. They got them on them, I don't know, did they call them red records or blue records or but anyway she did a movie a comedic movie called boarding house blues in 1948 and she's well known for liking young men she don't want nothing old but money and then we have billy buckwheat thomas 
he was from our gang. And he was around somewhere in 1936. And here's one of my favorites, Paul Mooney. Now, more than being a stand-up stand -up comic, he wrote comedic material for Sanford and Son, in Living Color, and The Dave Chappelle Show. He also did a movie entitled Bamboozle uh, in 2000. You know, Paul Mooney is dead and gone now. He was born in 1941, but he was one of the great satirists of our time. I just want to point that out. And how about Rudy Ray Moore? He created a character called Dolomite, who was a pimp in 1975, and it was a movie. Um, I think we went to the theater to see it, Dolomite. Dirty Mouth, he did Dirty Records too, and they called him the godfather of rap. And George Wallace. We mentioned George Wallace. He's a comedian, but he was the first socially accepted black comedian. I don't think he did any cussing. He had a good stand-up um, routine, and he was roommates with uh, Jerry Seinfeld for a while. In 1995, he got the Best Stand-Up Male Comedian Award, George Wallace. Now, here is a throwback from way back. Pig Meat Mark. <laughs> His name was Dewey, like the Dewey Decimal System. Dewey Pig Meat Mark. He was a singer, a dancer, an actor. He was an entertainer. But very little folks, very few folks know about him. I dug him because he had a, um, a song, Here Comes the Judge, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. But his stage routine, his stage presence was called Sweet Papa Pygmy. <laughs> uh, woo! So anyway, they had the song called Here Comes the Judge. And I, I used to know the whole doggone thing because it was so funny. And it was like, hear ye, hear ye, the court is swing. It's just about ready to do their thing. I don't want no lit. I don't want no tears. Don't want no lies. Above all, I don't want no alibis. This judge is hip, and that ain't all. He'll give you time if you're big or small. Fall in line for this court is neat. Peace, brother. Here comes the judge. <laughs> Okay, so I'm not a rapper, but I used to sing that thing when it came on. I knew all of it. Uh, one part it said, order in the court, order in the court. And it said, your honor, I'd like to order. What you want to order? I have two beers, please. <laughs> and another guy came up and said, your honor, you can't send me to jail. Don't you remember me? And he said, no, who are you? He said, I'm the fella that introduced you to your wife. He said, to my wife, life, you son of a gun, you. <laughs> ah! The judge. Now, Hee Haw and um, what's that other little country and western? Hee Haw, that's the one I remember most. Um, they borrowed from that. And I think he uh, did a guest spot on Hee Haw doing Judge Pygmy Markham. My boy. So, here are some other great comedic actors. Because <clears throat> a lot of these comedians, they did stand-up. But it was so easy just to transition over to television, movies. Uh, some of them made a name for themselves. I'm just going to give you a couple of names. Richard Pryor. Early on, he was very controversial. And of course, the drugs and 
But then he made fun of it and had a whole routine about how that uh, pipe was calling him. And yeah, but he died um, tragically uh, from uh, multiple sclerosis, I think it was. But anyway, Richard Pryor. He did a lot of great movies too. Red Fox. That's another throwback. He did a lot of them records also. Him and LaWanda Page. She played on Sanford and Son. Um, Esther. She was a mess too. Then there's Eddie Murphy. Bill Cosby. Keenan Ivory Wayans. Them Wayans boys did all kinds of stuff. That in Living Color. I loved that show. It was wonderful. And as you know, um, Jennifer Lopez danced on um, on that show. And um, I think the choreographer was another famous uh, Hispanic young lady, I think. But anyway, Keenan Ivory Wayans, Damon Wayans, and of course their sister Kim, um, Flip Wilson, one of the first drag queens. Um, don't know a lot about Flip Wilson's private life, huh? but he was confident when he became Geraldine. <laughs> the devil made me do it. <laughs> David Allen Greer, who also played on um, In Living Color. Steve Harvey. He's everywhere. He got radio, television, game show host, a cruise, <laughs> Steve Harvey, D.L. Hughley. I like him. I find him to be more satirical um, as opposed to a straight-up stand-up comedian. But he's funny. Cedric the Entertainer, Bernie Mac, Martin Lawrence, Chris Rock. Tommy Davidson. He also played on In Living Color. Faison Love. I did not know that he was from Cuba. Kevin Hart. Jamie Foxx. Monique. Sinbad. Cat Williams. <laughs> Him and Dave Chappelle. Maybe they need to get together. Some more. I love her humor. She's something. And she's very attractive. Adele Gibbons. Tracy Morgan. He had a terrible accident, but I believe he's back um, doing comedy. Joe Torrey. Ronaldo Ray. Tyler Perry. Now that is a story. They have a um, uh, semi-autobiography on Free V TV um, on him. Check it out. It was very good. Dick Gregory. Eh, I didn't consider him a comedian either. I saw him as a satirist, but Chris. Tucker, Whoopi Goldberg, Nell Carter, and Marla Gibbs. Just to name a few. There are certainly many others, but those made a list um, on uh, the internet. Listen. Proverbs 17.22 said, Laughter does a heart good like a medicine. Laughter is a gift from God. Laugh and be encouraged. That's my spiel for tonight. Listen, please share, like, comment. I'm getting some comments. People, you know, getting on me for whatever, whatever. Again, it's my channel. It's my party and I cry if I want to.
it is my party. Remember, you don't know what you don't know. Take care.